Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the November 22nd Mount Vernon City School District School Board meeting. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Roll call. Roll call. Trustee Kelly? Here. Trustee Njenga? Here. Trustee Adesobi? Trustee Gale? Here. Trustee Lency? Here. Trustee Kerwin? Here. Trustee Red? Trustee White? President. President Saunders? Here. We have a forum. So we have communication from the public, please. There is no legal requirement to recognize public comment at meetings of the Board of Education. However, the Board recognizes the critical importance of community discourse and involvement in the education of Mount Vernon's children, and accordingly, members of the public are invited to speak at each regularly scheduled Board meeting, subject to the terms of the Board policy. A speaker must register in advance by no later than 4 p.m. the day of the meeting by contacting the district clerk in person at 165 North Columbus Avenue, Mount Vernon, New York, by phone at 914-665-5235, or by email. The board welcomes all respectful comment, whether praise or criticism. However, identifying and criticizing a specific student, parent, teacher, administrator, or other Mount Vernon education official or employee is strictly prohibited. Any such complaint must be presented and addressed through proper administrative channels. Each speaker is allowed three minutes to speak. Up to one additional minute may be used for the speaker to summarize and conclude their remarks. If appropriate, board trustee and or the superintendent or other staff members at the direction of the superintendent may immediately respond to a speaker's remarks. Our first speaker tonight is Harrington Boyd. Heroes give us hope. When we're going through hardship and looking down, heroes give us a reason to look up again. They teach us how to be kind and compassionate and to fight for good. They make connections with all of us through embodying the aspects of humanity that are positive. That connection is what I have created with my Devoyant Cell program. Fostering that connection will allow myself and my team to reprogram the mindsets of children and produce socially responsive adults and young adults in the future. Our students are eager to learn from Devoyant because of its diverse cast of characters representing different backgrounds and supporting inclusion. We know that the excitement and the focus that students experience when learning through Devoyant will help them remember our lessons for a lifetime. Our guide includes resources and materials to be used throughout the school year. It was designed to accommodate to general education, special education, 
and English new learner populations, and demonstrates core content like main idea and details, rule-based summarization, opinion writing pieces, and student debates, realistic ones with gavels and everything. In closing, schools need excellent cell programs in these hard times. Many of you are working tirelessly to find programs that can help our children. But I want you all to remember that our children are not just data points to bolster someone's statistics. They are human beings. They are individuals with dreams, aspirations. They struggle sometimes. And they have traumas sometimes. We designed our program because we know that promoting cell by creating a profound connection through diversity, inclusion, equity, and a sense of belonging is of utmost importance for our youth's growth. I came here today to ask for the opportunity to present my program to the board in hopes that in the future it can be used in Mount Vernon to benefit this district's youth as well. I would like to thank the board, the PTA, and the superintendent for allowing me here to speak today. Thank you. Thank you. I actually brought these advertisements, just pamphlets, for anyone that would like to learn more about our program and reach out to us on our website. Just take a moment to hand these out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Is this contact information on it? Yes. This young man, this program should be, you know, you guys should consider it. But unfortunately, I'm here because of an article that I read in the newspaper where, uh, and I would like to congratulate uh, Trustee Curry for bringing up this uh, $600,000 of questionable contracts. And through the years, we learned it's $8 million. You know, at a minimum, at a minimum, um, because this is a, a, a black community, I feel, this, 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 goes, this goes unnoticed. We, have the, we pay the highest per capita student in the whole county, the highest taxes, and we, we're coming up here begging to, to spend our own money for these programs. This is, this is ridiculous. Um, a shell company or whatever, Just Inspire, um, I would recommend this board, because you guys have the power, Re refer this matter to the, the U.S. Attorney's Office, because they, they the only, if this was true, which is in that article, you know, you have wire fraud, you have mail fraud, only the U.S. Attorney, those, those are federal charges. At minimum, in Scarsdale, maybe a month ago, this is public knowledge, there was a, a misappropriation of payroll taxes. The superintendent resigned. Anyone here involved in this scam, at minimum, the superintendent should resign here, be suspended. The business manager who let the checks go out of the thing should be suspended. I mean, this is ridiculous. But I say, but the community, the petition is going to be circulating in the community in the coming days for support to have the, every, the perpetrator. This is, this is a crime. $8 million? This is ridiculous. Five of you guys are up for re-election this year. So... If you guys don't want to make the campaign, I mean, 
Trusty Courage has shown that she's got elected to do. She's questioning. This is what you guys are. You guys are the board. You guys should use the guys in ears. You control. You have the power. Immediately, the superintendent should be suspended. Or anybody who is involved in this, and the son should be suspended. This is ridiculous. This is, a, this, is, this is nepotism. This is the direct line. This is her boss. She reports directly. This is ridiculous. You have no policies regarding nepotism here. I mean, this is, you guys are going to be, continue to be the laughing stock. This city is going to be the laughing stock of the, I mean, this problem. It's going to be gentrified right now. Your properties are losing value because of this foolishness going on in the community. So if you don't want to be the laughing stock, you guys got to get your, get your gifts. You have no one to blame but yourself. 30 years black people have been in power in this city. And what's going on? It's been deteriorated. I mean, you guys should be ashamed of yourselves. This is black on black crime. But, you know, just like it is Chicago and other places, black on black crime does not get any attention. But I'm going to make sure of your attention. Anyone who's involved should be thrown in jail. And they should be sentenced for years, stealing from the poor black kids in the community, which is attributing to the violence of the community because they have nowhere to go. And then you guys are doing this phony progress for karate or I don't know, whatever these requisitions are, but we demand answers on this justice fire. And we're not going to let this go. I, I suggest that this suspect these things have been going on in the community for years and years. But this is the first concrete evidence that we have some possibly criminal activity that is documented. The school board, I implore you, the, why, we waste, why are we wasting our money to hire auditors when the federal government can do it for free? I would implore you all, get together on a letter and ask the U.S. Attorney, this, and let them just look forward what they may. I know some of these may be your friends and so forth, but you know, you're here stewards of the trustees' money, the people's money. So, you know, this friendship boundaries stuff, it's, it's out the door. So I suggest tomorrow, go to an executive session, craft a letter, and, 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 a, and let the public know what's going on. Because the public puts you guys in power, and the public can take you guys out of power. So realize the power that you have invested by the people. Have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Rivers. <coughs> Our next speaker, Hammurabi Bay. Good evening. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Brother Hammurabi Bay. I used to be Vernon Miles back in the day. Uh, I've been to many of these meetings. The one thing I'm glad to see is that we have a bunch of women here. <laughs> I don't think you know what I'm going to tell you. When is Mother's Day? Can you speak up a little bit, Mr. Bay? Mother's Day is every day. Mr. 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 Mr.
A man can do anything he wants to, but if you don't bring us through, we don't ever get here. Cracker dolls, butterflies, any kind of animal you're talking about. So you have the power. You have to exercise your power so they understand how strong you really are. Because then none of us have no babies and, and, and carry it for nine months. And you are older than what you think. If you add those nine months on the ten months that your mother carries you, you have to add them on. So I added mine on August 10th. Every November, I get my, my money back from my mother. So we're disrespecting our, all, all our mothers in here. They lied to you, you believed the lie, and we're still carrying on sitting here now like a bunch of dummies. I was dumb too. So I'm just here to drop in on you so you can think about it. Whatever your job is, it has to be done for the children. It has nothing to do with your person, how much money you make, or who you hire. Let's do what you have to do for children, and we won't have what we just heard here today. And I want to talk to the young brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Warren Mitchell. Good evening, board, uh, Dr. BC, cabinet. Um, I sent an email out to the board today requesting an RFP, which is a request for proposal, so that we can finally have a, an audit, a real audit. Now, Dr. BC, who in the cabinet would know if there's an audit going on right now? You, mm -hmm. the board, and the cabinet. Yes. Right. yes. But the cabinet would be though for certain if there's an audit of special education going on right now. That would be the go-to, wouldn't it? Okay. My email chain today had two different answers come back about whether there's a board, uh, a, a, um, an audit going on with special education. 2019, 20, 21, 22. We have students that have been not getting their services for various reasons. We already know it. IEP, special education kids not getting their services for various reasons. It's not about finger pointing. It's about resolution. It's about being able to present to the public, hey, you know what, we know this is going on, it's been going on. Trustee Saunders, President Saunders, you chaired the Special Education Committee for many years. Bless you, faithfully, you chaired that committee. Where's the Judy Elliott report? We've been had that for how long now? Have you been reviewed? Have we made changes? Why haven't we made changes? Where's this audit? The audit is not happening, according to Superintendent, uh, Assistant Superintendent of Business and Ops. No audit going on. Not certain why I got an email from, from anybody on the board telling me that there's an audit going on when there's not. We need an audit so that we can fix the issues. The city needs partnership. The school district needs partnership. And he says the jewel of Westchester, the school district cannot be the joke of Westchester. Our neighboring cities and towns should not laugh when they say, I'm from Mount Vernon. People should not say, oh, I'm moving to Mount Vernon, should I do it? No, don't put your kids in there because all they do is try to tear down whoever's running the district. That shouldn't be the case. And speaking of that, one, two, three. Trustee White, Trustee Saunders, Trustee Red, who's not here, myself, and five other humans, sat in that room across the hall about four months ago, vetted people, we interviewed folks, and we came to the determination together that Dr. B.C. was the best person to take this district forward. And we chose her to run this district unanimously. Why on earth? Are we all quiet like a graveyard while she is being bullied by the usual suspects? Being stoned in public. Why are we standing here quietly while members of the cabinet are being stoned and bullied? But why, why are we sitting here? She's being bullied. Nobody, listen, y'all be quiet. That's fine. I'm not going to be quiet. You're not going to just bully my superintendent that I know I put in office. The fact that we know Justin Spy, we've been giving the money since 2016. We done passed resolutions before I was on the board. Some of you sitting here were on the board and passing resolutions to give Justin Spy money for years now. Okay? So it's not like we didn't know who Justin Spy was. It's not like legal didn't vet uh, Dr. BC or her son to make sure they do not own Justin Spy because we did back in May when I was still on the board. So we do know that. It's like it's cool to be like it's a mystery, but it's really not a mystery. Okay? So listen, in all actuality, partnering and resolving. Any member on the board, if you're an educator or an ex-educator, you know the importance of students getting their IEP mandated services. The gentleman came up and just pitched this is what his, his business does. He understands it too. We cannot sit back and act like we're going to forever sit and keep talking about old oh, students ain't getting any services. And the only time we talk about this is around spring. Why? Because the flowers is up? No. 
It's because at that time, it seems to be clever to mention it at that time frame of the year every year in the spring. But why is nobody getting nothing done about it? Why has no board member said anything about the actually press? I want to see a presentation to the public about where we stand with compensatory services from all the kids that didn't get their services from COVID when we went home. We should be able to have a presentation to the public and something that goes on the district site that shows all of that. There's no reason for this no more. We can't sit and continue talking about it and acting like we're doing something when we know nobody's pressing nothing. And all we're doing is making sure whoever's hired and fired got to be friends with a board member to keep their job or get a job. Mr. What Mitchell, your time is yeah, I, mean, I, I, I believe that. Thank you for and your I mean, comments. Also, we also need to pay attention to the fact that this might be here, but I'm still talking to this. Uh, right? <laughs> we appreciate all your comments, Mr. Mr. Right? Mitchell. We can't even afford to keep Facebook going live. We're not live right now because of the way the money's being spent because we don't have enough to cover it. No repairs in this district is going to happen because of where the budget is. Can't keep talking about money that's supposed to disappeared five or twelve years ago when certain members of this board was on this board mm -hmm. and still talk about how that money that was missing since like, five, six years ago is now affecting the fact that we don't have repairs on the South Side building. I don't want to hear that. Thank you, South Mr. Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Can, can we have security you know, right, escort, Mr. Mitchell? I'm sorry. Can we have security escort, Mr. Mitchell, Walking off period. the stage, if you please? If haven't been to your buildings, please go visit your buildings. Can we get security to escort Thank Mr. You. Mitchell out of here? Thank you for your time. I appreciate your comments, Mr. Mitchell. Thank you. I have a question. Go ahead. Mr. Mitchell, hi. Hi, I have a question. Sure. You said you served um, yes, on the board. When, while you were on the board, um, were those programs, were those audits were done as far as the IEP? What have you done do, so during the I three years sure. to, so to make I, sure, I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm asking a question, yeah. to make sure that those things were done that you're so passionate about now? So can I, can let, I, let me, can I just add one thing, Ms. Kerwin? Also, when I asked for an audit for five or six years ago, when Mr. Mitchell was on the board, he stood in the way of getting one. I wasn't on the board So, five, six years ago. you were on the board for three years and you, stu and you stood in the way. Four, five, six years ago. He was on the board yeah, for three years and you stood in the way of an audit. So, you can go ahead and answer Ms. Kerwin's question if you I'll want to. I'll answer your question. First of all, the reason I didn't chase the, that audit is because I didn't chair that committee because I wasn't knowledgeable at the time. Oh, and you I not. believe that the president Saunders, who did chair that committee for the past, I think, five, six years now, she did, I felt that she had it under control. There was another prior trustee who also seemed to have that under control. So all I really wanted to see was the committee reports to see where we stood. Now, if, you, if anybody knows me, and most people who know me, I don't stand in the way of anything. So, mm -hmm. if anything, you tell me, and I stood up there, sat in that seat, and when Trustee Saunders had said, I want to fit this order and that order, I sat there and I backed her and said, yes, can we please, why don't we have it yet? There's questions. You can read, look at the, the, um, the previous meetings. I've backed her, supported her request, because yes, we should get audits. We should have reports from the cabinet and give the trustees what they need in a timely fashion. You shouldn't have to wait until you have to go get a haircut or color your hair again before you get answers from the committee and the cabinet with things that you want to know. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Does that, does that answer the question? Uh, somewhat, it does. Somewhat. I was just, I was just curious as to, as to, to why you didn't push through um, for these audits and for the IEP services while you were on the board. Because Re regardless said, if you were chairing the, um, the committee. That was the main reason. I wasn't knowledgeable. Okay. I really wasn't. So, I understand. And I really felt I had great faith in my fellow board members, especially the ones that have been here for so long. Mm -hmm. I really felt that they knew what they were doing. And I don't believe in saying something that I don't have answers and facts for. Okay. That's why I'm right now. I'm not making accusations or anything. I'm just saying we never got it. I'm making a request that anybody can request it now. Because I didn't know. Okay. I really didn't. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Evelyn Torres. Hi everybody. Hello. Hello. I'm coming here in the middle because I need everyone's attention. Um, my son, Juan Carlos Torres, seven years old, excuse me, I'm not supposed to mention any names. Seven years old, went missing from Rebecca Turner Elementary School last Monday and no one knew. Um, on Monday, November 14th, 2022, at 8.28 a.m. while I was at work. Ms. Torres, can you face the board? You can stand yeah, out there. We can hear you, but you need to face the board. You're well, talking. Well, I'm facing the board, and no one's facing me. Yeah, but you can. You if you stand there, everybody oh, can hear you. Guys, thank you. Thank you. On Monday, where's the camera? Hi, everybody. 
On Monday, November 14th at 11.28 a.m. while I was at work, I received a notification on my phone from my driveway on my ring camera. The video showed my seven-year-old son scooting by, by a garbage bag in my driveway. I immediately called my eldest daughter, who was still at home at the time, and asked her if her brother was home. She responded no. Um, I quickly went to see the live view on my camera and confirmed that, in fact, my son was still crouched down in the driveway. She quickly called out for him to come inside the house. He hid for a few and then responded to her call. Time is, I sprinkled my statement with time because when a child goes missing, time is very important. Um, I quickly texted the, he hid for a few seconds and then, when I, and then responded to her call. I coughed out of my job at 11.36 a.m. I work at 100 East 1st Street and I live on 59 Wildwood Avenue. Um, I quickly texted his teacher on the Remind app and sent her a screenshot of my son in the driveway and asked if she was aware that my child was not in the classroom. At 11.40 a.m., I called the school guidance counselor directly and informed her that my son was not in school but at home. She stated that she would let the principal know and, and that I should expect a call. I had to walk home because I was not able to get a car ride on time. I called the Mount Vernon Police Department at 11.43 a.m. and requested that an officer be dispatched because a seven-year-old had walked out of Rebecca Turner Elementary School and as of the time that I received a notification on my phone, which was 11.28 a.m., I still had not received a call from the school advising me that my child was missing. No one at the school was aware that my child was missing. I notified them. The school principal called me at 11.57 a.m. She apologized and informed me that the guidance counselor had alerted her that my son was not in the school. She stated that her and the assistant principal ran to the lunchroom to confirm that he was in fact not there. My son's teacher responded to my text that my son had left to go to the bathroom at 10.45 a.m. I reached my home a little after 12 and was greeted by, office, by, by a Mount Vernon Police Department officer. He informed me that he had checked the driveway and the surrounding premises and did not see my son. I told him that my son had gone inside. Um, he asked my son why he left the school, how he left the school, and my son answered his questions. Another officer came in shortly and, followed, and asked more follow-up questions. We, my daughter and I provided her our IDs, and um, she personally called the teacher, my son's teacher, on her cell phone because my, her son used to be a classmate of the teacher. Um, she asked me at what time did I see my son. I reviewed my ring camera again, and this time I saw that the ring camera picked up my son at 10.52.15 a.m. When I saw this, my stomach dropped. I did not receive a notification until 11.28 and immediately reacted. My seven-year-old son was missing from the school since before 10.52 a.m. and no one knew he was gone. He was not in the school premises. I dropped him off at school this mo at, in the morning at 8.25 and went to work like I always do. Um, I asked the officers to return my son to Rebecca Turner, and one of the officers escorted him. My daughter and I followed. When we, were, when we reached the school, we were greeted by the principal, the assistant principal, and my son's teacher. The principal did apologize, but then after that, the, the focus became on why my son left and the strategies he used. No one discussed the negligence. A seven-year-old boy under four feet tall in the school ran across the field, crossed two streets, and ran home unattended. They lost track of a seven-year-old kid. The teacher explained that he left to go to the bathroom at 10.45 a.m. When he did not return, she thought that he went to the nurse because his eyes itched, and he, went, he wants to get a cold compress. And nothing after that. No one in that school was aware that my child was not there until I notified them. He was alone in the street for almost an hour from 10.45 a.m. When the teacher stated he left until about he left until about 11:28, when I saw him in the driveway, and no one knew until I called and made them aware that he was not in the building, this is not an issue to be ignored, and this is not acceptable. My child had his reasons to leave the school, and that is something that my family is exploring. He was spoken to on the dangers of being out alone, and he was punished. He did try to leave again on Tuesday, November 15th, and this time he was stopped. He was stopped because the principal stated that he would be walked to the bathroom with a buddy for the remainder of the week. As of today, the doors still don't have an alarm or a camera. How about if another kid comes and copies my child? What happens if my child tries again next week or the following week? How do I know that my child is safe in school? This incident could have gone another way. Honestly, I am grateful that I am standing here today 
talking to you guys and that I wrote this letter instead of standing in front of City Hall with all of you with candles and blue balloons consoling me. That's disgusting. My child went missing. He could have gotten hit by a car. He could, he could have gotten taken by a meth patient. What measures, I need to know, what measures is the Board of Ed going to take to make sure that my kid and every other kid in the school is safe and that a reoccurrence like this does not happen? I need, we need to know, as parents, we need to know, and it's not fair. Also, I wrote this email and I sent it to various people and no one responded to me until today. The principal didn't call me back. The urgency of this was not indicated and honestly, that's why I'm standing here. Because if anybody had called me last week and told me, listen, we're going to review what happened, we're going to talk to certain people, we're going to make sure that this doesn't happen again, I wouldn't be standing here today. It's not fair. I don't want this to happen again, and I'm angry. Now I'm angry. I was puzzled and upset last week, but I'm angry. Is there anything else anybody wants to ask? Ms. Torres, I, I, I feel your passion, um, and this is the first time we're hearing about this right now. So um, I think Dr. Ham Dr. Hamilton, yes. Dr. B.C. Um, is, should he yes. answer that question? Yes. Well, I just spoke to you today, and we had a very nice conversation. I will definitely be looking into the matter. As of tomorrow, I'll be meeting with the principal to discuss the different procedures and what took place. I also have Dr. Kim Smith, who was um, Assistant Superintendent of PPS, is looking at it too. And I definitely will give you all the different um, things that we put into place. It's not that we know how procedures into place, but were they followed? I don't worry. Right. So as I spoke to you today, we are definitely going to have those conversations tomorrow and follow through on it. And I will definitely let you know where we are. But I, first of all, I must apologize for that happening to you and that nobody didn't get back in time. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, as soon as possible. So sorry. But as soon as I was told though, I called you today and we have that conversation. And I even said to you, you could come and speak at the board of, that's not a problem. The problem is, once I know a situation, I'm going to deal with it because safety is a priority for me. And that's the first thing I said to you today. But we will continue this conversation. Thank you. So Sorry what's about the, So what's the um, corrective action that we're going to do for the future? Well, uh, the corrective action is going to be a group of us are going to have to come together to decide what the situation is because there are two sides to a story to. I have to hear from her, the principal, what took place so that we can put the proper intervention into place. Dr. So, Bennett Connor, respectfully, there are two sides to the story, but the point is, it's just that my kid left. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. How, well, how did that happen? Most importantly. And, and, you know, yes. And you're, and what you're right. Said, you know, as to, like last week I was in such a daze that immediately when we got to the school, they blamed it on him. And I was just like, okay, you know, it just happened. He needs to be punished. So I, I kind of went with the flow. But then as time goes on, and I'm talking to people, they're like, okay, what? Okay, but well, well, what did they do? And it was their fault. And I'm just like, you're right. And not only that, the, 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 the police officer that wrote the report, she wrote this report as if she was writing about some high school student that left. She indicated that the kid left without permission. A seven-year-old doesn't need permission. He should not have been able to leave the school. And you are correct, but I have to hear the other side. No, of the story. I know that. Of course, you yes. will. I, right. And at the end of the day, he shouldn't have been gone. Right. Or at, somebody could have told me if he was missing five minutes later. How do you miss a kid? Really? And he could have had a seizure, a heart attack. I don't know. And I told you. And I totally agree with you with you that. Know, today. I know you did, and I appreciate that. But now I'm speaking to the board. Did you okay. come to the one because that's my school. But stairway. Excuse me. Do you know what door he went out of? Um, he went through the first door, I think, where the kindergartners get let up. You know where the tree is? On the that door, and the, that it has little steps. Mr. Dogg, what door is that? <laughs> I know what that is. It's, it's the pre K. Is it in the front of the building? On the side, with, in front of the I think it's the side where the steps are? Yes. Yeah, it's with their, with their egregious misses. Okay. I'm sorry, how long you said the principal took before they reach out to you? Um, she called me at, because I have it on my cell phone, that's why I was able to <laughs> indicate the time, um, at 11.57 a.m. I Two left hours. my job at 11.28 and I called the guidance counselor at 11.40. But the principal said that her and the assistant principal went to look for my son in the lunchroom. So tomorrow, the first thing we're going to be, we're going, we have to increase security in that building. That's point number one. Yeah. You know, but there are other things that I have to look into to, to make sure that everything is addressed properly in terms Dr. of... Dr. Conroy, that school has, um, it's, it has kids with special needs. There are autistic mm -hmm. kids in there. Yes. I mean, my son is regular. He's a regular student, but he's very smart. 
And I get it because some people, just because of the way he talks or the way he acts, they'll trust him in anything, right? He's very charming as well. But that doesn't excuse <laughs> the fact that you let, you. Th that's a big discrepancy. I should not have had to call the school and tell them, he's not there. Really, isn't he? No, he's not. not. And I agree with you on that. That's what we want to Totally agree with you on that. So let me set to work tomorrow. Thank you. Um, like, uh, how are you going to follow up with me and when? Well, I'm going to follow up with you tomorrow Perfect. after the meeting. And if I have to pull you into the meeting, then I do that too. Definitely. So, I don't work too far. Can we follow up with the board also? Yeah, you need to let the board know what actions you're, you're taking. I know you said you were going to get more security, but can there be doorbells or alarms at the doors? Can we put some kind of That would take time right now. Right now. I have to meet with a group of folks. That's something we could do because like she said, I actually will say, kids in, in the I'm sorry, I'm Mark Fancy. I'm on the security committee, safety and security committee. So I do know during the process of rewiring most of the schools for cameras and all the things that could prevent this in the future security-wise. I can't account for teachers or principals. Right. Um, Security-wise, they are doing that, and I think you even just authorized more security guards this week already. So I don't, I didn't know it has anything to do with this. Uh, I'm not saying it does. I'm saying I know we, I know, I saw in an email to me that they are moving some money in order to get more guards into the school district. Well, they so. need to apply, to, especially in elementary school. These, these, they, they're going to do it. They're, they're little kids. My, I came from District 3 in the Upper West Side, and I moved my family here because Mount Vernon is in the middle of everything, and I like it. It's a small community. I came from District 3 here. I dedicate my life here. I work in the community, so I, and I'm a service worker at that. If I take care of the community, I want the community to take care of my kids. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Right. That's That's absolutely right. Absolutely every absolutely expectation right. for that. And we will. You said, on my end, I will certainly follow up with this. And I mean, that's that's why they have increased the manpower and manpower on the security side in all the schools to accommodate for the situation in the world and the fact that, you know, there are situations where physical security is lacking. So they brought in more manpower in order to keep track of it. In this case, I, unfortunately, your son did slip right through it, and he's obviously a very intelligent kid, as you point out, because he makes his way out and, and actually made his way home. I'm impressed with that. Um, but it, as you point out, that might not have been the result here, and we might have been in an entirely different place right now. So. Mr. Leno, needs to get expedited. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Ben Blake. Ben Bake. Hi, my name is uh, Ben Baki. Uh, I'm the PTA president at uh, Rebecca Turner, and I uh, mostly came to uh, just support uh, Ms. Torres. And uh, I mean, obviously, she did a very good job of advocating for herself. But um, I did want to reiterate about safety and security, and she mentioned it as well. But uh, RTES is a autism cohort school. And um, my daughter's autistic, mm -hmm. and one of the things her and a lot of those kids like to do is run away. Like, it's it's a very common uh, symptom, I guess, or action that uh, autistic people do. So if, if you guys can put that, that school on like the top of the list, because it's she's ran away a few times. Her teachers have always been able to catch her. She's in a you know there's assistant teachers and teachers, but I don't know. It's reading her. Reading her letter was like terrifying to me. And uh, it's just something I think you guys should, it, it has to be a priority at this school throughout the district. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That ends our public comment. Thank you. All right. So, um, <coughs> reports from the superintendent. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me because. We don't have any um, any sound. It's back. It works. It's back. It's back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Is Facebook live? Yeah. Okay. So, as we approach the Thanksgiving season, I would like each and every one of you to give thanks for small mercies because they do exist. So tonight as we give thanks for small mercies, 
there are a couple of things that I would like to thank the community for, as well as the principals and staff and students, or coaches, and our um, CSCA workers, all of those. I give thanks for the amount of work that you have put in to, to make sure that the school district runs successfully. So I want to say that. And uh, please, when you get some time, just do some form of reflection. Reflection on what you as an individual can do for the, for the district better. Just reflect on that because it is very important. And please, if you get a chance, go into Ephesians, Ephesians 4, 29, 30, and 31. And please read those, those verses because it is very important that you are, you should be respected by what comes out of your mouth. And you should always be, at all times, be respectful to others. So with that, I want to thank the community and thank everyone and wish you guys a happy Thanksgiving. With that being said, I have a presentation tonight by Mr. Um, from Savin, Kevin. And many people have been asking questions about the bond, the status of the bond. And I know some questions have been asked because you don't know the status of the bond. So tonight I'm going to ask Mr. Savin to present on that bond, where we are. Take it away, Mr. Kevin. Um, would you like me to use a microphone on the stage? Sure. Yeah, sure. Can I get this? Is that over there? Is that over there? Okay, there we go. <laughs> And if we could bring the PowerPoint up. And you have a little jump present? Did you put the... I did, yeah. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, awesome. Okay, well, um, thank everyone for uh, having me this evening. Uh, this will be uh, somewhat of a brief uh, review of the bond. In 2015, uh, the board, as well as the district, uh, set out to determine how to fix the schools. Why is that? Because we realized that in 2015, there was $170 million worth of repairs that were needed in the district, $170 million. So what were some of those repairs? If you take a look at the screen, you'll uh, see uh, some of the before pictures. As you can see from Graham, uh, that used to be just the face of it with no entrance, correct? Moving forward, looking at Columbus Auditorium, the conditions, uh, Williams Auditorium, uh, some 50, 60, 70 years since the last renovation on the, on the auditorium. Uh, Columbus uh, School, uh, we see the condition of the classroom, uh, homes, similar. So again, this is painting the picture for the trustees that are new. Uh, because uh, perhaps many have not had a chance to visit the schools either recently or definitely not in 2015 uh, when these conditions were noted uh, by the architect, Phil and D'Angelo. Uh, but this gives us a nice uh, uh, playback of history, right? That's very important. If we look at Lincoln, uh, the open floor plan with the accordion uh, doors, of course, uh, very difficult uh, for learning as well as the carpet. <laughs> uh, Parker, Again, Thornton was uh, some 100 years, uh, uh, close to 100 years, with regard to the auditorium built in 1932. Uh, various uh, leaks on Thornton. And this is uh, one of my favorites, the, uh, um, the high school fields. But if you look at the bleachers there on the right, uh, not exactly uh, ready for game day. Uh, Mandela, of course, uh, very uh, deplorable conditions, uh, even uh, being closed uh, for a number of years, at least a portion of it. You can see uh, the situation that existed there. We'll just step through some of these. Uh, this was due to a leak in the uh, academy. But once 2015 hit, uh, the decision was made, determination by the community and the board to move forward with addressing the issues. Um, what are some of them? So look what Graham went to. 
from basically uh, dirt in the ground. And this is time-lapse video showing the basketball uh, court, the uh, fields, uh, the courtyard, uh, parking. What a drastic difference in a year and a half. We take a look at the Graham entrance. Uh, notice now that entire face is completely different. Uh, that included the overall renovation uh, to implement pre-K to 8, uh, new fields, uh, new main entrance and site improvement. Uh, hopefully other uh, uh, buildings will be able to uh, benefit uh, from the example that's here. Upgrades with the emergency lighting, fire alarm, IT upgrades, as well as the playground. Main lobby, uh, the science. Uh, the Columbus Auditorium, a drastic difference from where it was, if you uh, remember from that picture. Uh, Williams as well. Again, a diligent effort put forth uh, through public bids to have contractors uh, fulfill uh, their obligation as designed by the architects uh, to complete uh, the renovation of the spaces that were assigned. Just stepping through some more of them. Uh, then we went to the five schools uh, in order to uh, move them to pre-K uh, to eight. Uh, many of them were just uh, pre-K to six, so in order to, uh, or did not have an eighth grade. So in order to accomplish that, uh, the science classrooms were put in. Uh, this is um, uh, Lincoln, the science lecture, Holmes, pre-K. Uh, Thornton had serious uh, renovations uh, throughout the building. Uh, uh, building-wide interior renovations, especially the auditorium, uh, as well as a new stair tower, uh, gym storage, and uh, outside work. And this was pretty impressive uh, to take uh, something that was built in 1932 uh, to make it into what it is uh, today. Also, it added a new dance studio, experimental theater, uh, Pennington, uh, re interior renovations as well as an addition. And so here's another hole in the ground to now the 12 classroom addition. Again, uh, the beauty of time-lapse video. <laughs> Hard to appreciate what was done uh, over the course of two years. Uh, but as was shown in that video, uh, real quick, it demonstrates uh, all the additional things that were accomplished with the $108 million. Mount Vernon Steam, uh, this was uh, critical to uh, the uh, 2020 vision for the high schools of excellence, including the new spaces for engineering labs, makerspace, shop, science, art, robotics. So renovation, uh, most people think of, well, it just needs to be renovated. But the reality is, if you do not upgrade the building to what you want it to be, then you're going to pay for it twice. Because if you built the, if you renovated the building and put it back to the way it was when it was built 50, 60, 100 years ago, that's all you're going to have. And then you're going to pay another amount, uh, considerably more, in order to enhance it, basically undoing the work that you already did. So wherever there was work accomplished or done, uh, the focus was on not just putting it back to the way it was, but to meet the goals that the board had as well as the community. And... There we go. All right, uh, a brand new roof on um, uh, the STEAM Academy. You can imagine how large a project that was, a huge uh, building, as well as exterior work. And then we go to the high school. Uh, uh, again, we saw the difficulties with uh, having uh, adequate space and locations for uh, the talent that's in Mount Vernon. But yet this was uh, drawn up by the architect as well as implemented. Uh, we have the new tennis courts, eight-lane track, new football field, and it was done in two phases. The move to uh, the baseball field, softball, soccer, and the running path. Uh, Trap Hagen Science. Uh, there were modulars, for those who were not aware of it, in order to have swing space uh, for uh, Mandela. Uh, considerable IT improvements uh, that were done, they were focused on the buildings that were getting the upgrades, which were uh, Graham, Pennington, and Thornton, as well as Mandela and the STEAMS Academy. Uh, Mandela renovation. Uh, 
And you can imagine uh, what that was like. Uh, this is an example of what the renovation was like throughout the entire building. So basically, um, you gut the building. It was actually uh, acknowledged by SCD as a gut renovation. So that's the reason why it costs so much because you have a 100-year-old building and the conditions were uh, not the best, to say the least. As you can see, they ripped off the entire roof. Uh, and this is uh, probably key. This is any renovation that will that took place in the past as well as what you have to plan for in the future. Uh, these are discovered conditions in Mandela, meaning you could have the best architect in the world, whoever built a Freedom Tower and anything else. When you actually uh, estimate how much it's going to cost to renovate something without tearing it down completely, you are not aware of all of the um, uh, concealed locations that may be a problem. So in this case on the left, you see that used to be a steel beam. <laughs> but look at where it, what it is now, or what it was uh, once they opened it up. Uh, as well as the, the roof uh, support structures, they just were not there. Uh, around the windows, uh, serious leaks. So these are all the things that were not known until you actually open the building up completely during renovation. And uh, Grimes uh, moved from being uh, the demo, uh, move, moving over to just the electrical code upgrades due to uh, funding. All right, so the fun part, the financials. So um, all of you are educators or we're part of a district uh, that educates. Uh, you have teachers, you have others, and Sometimes, just because someone has a label of a teacher does not mean that they know math, that they know science, that they know trigonometry, whatever it is, they have a specialty, they have some general, but they can't answer every question. Well, in most cases, most cannot appreciate or understand the cost of construction. As an example, uh, how many would appreciate or know that in May 2020, the cost of a seventh grade classroom, and this is right off the SED website as well as the Department of Labor, it cost $844,000 for a single classroom. So right there you may think, oh well, I've painted my house before, I've painted some rooms, I've renovated a few items, but the reality is a school building is not a school building, it's an apartment complex. In this case, you take Mount Vernon High School, that's a hundred basically units in that building. So it's, in the, it's a complex, it's not a bu building. So when you look at it from that perspective, you can appreciate one, it costs a lot. So uh, that is one thing that I think was a wake up call for most uh, people when we did this. Uh, but actually now, look at August 2022, according to the state, a 30% increase, it's now cost 1.2 million. Which means if you had decided two years ago to try to figure out what it was gonna cost to do something, you were gonna be off by 30% potentially, even with the best estimate, why? because of inflation. We all know about food, the price of uh, cars, everything is going up. So in this case, if you were to plan something for the future, these are the numbers to actually go with because this is off the Department of Labor and the SED website. 1.2 million per 770 square foot classroom. That is not a high school science room. That is not art, that's not dance. That is strictly a 770 foot square uh, uh, classroom for seventh grade. The wonderful thing though is, is that that's also the amount of money that the state will provide you. So that's the reason why it's okay for it to be uh, high in this instance because the maximum cost allowance is determined by the state. So regardless of what you plan on doing, in the future, you have to go based on what the state is going to aid so that you can get that money back. So that's uh, the cost. Taking a step back with that in mind, one classroom, $1.2 million. In 2015, the architect said that there was $170 million in repairs. So that's the number to go with, $170 million. So now that $170 million is broken down as listed here from Mandela all the way through the Ed Center. Uh, you can see uh, the most uh, being the Mount Vernon High School. Uh, having uh, $35 million in needed repairs. But also look at the column called age. Uh, most of the buildings are over 50 years. So you can imagine using those buildings uh, some 250 days a year or thereabouts, depending upon summer school, and you have traffic in basically your front room every single day, except for the weekends, how you could not have problems as far as 
uh, the need for additional cost to repair, uh, knowing our children are good, but <laughs> uh, uh, there can be times where just wear and tear will cost you. So what was the decision that was made in 2016? Uh, the board unanimously decided, as well as the, view, the community voted, that only 30% of the 70 million will be included in the 2020 bond. So that means, or equates to 49 million of the 170 was gonna be in the repairs. Why is that important to know? Because there's only so much you can borrow. So the debt service limits limit how much you can borrow. So even if you had 170 million in repairs before any academic improvements, you still have the issue of you can only borrow so much, right? Your credit card has a limit. Uh, also, the academic needs for the high schools of excellence, as well as uh, creating the pre-K to eight community schools uh, were needed. So now that leaves us with the 2016 uh, repairs uh, comparison. Uh, so in 2016, that means $120 million in repairs were postponed. Uh, so the, there you see the 170 by school, and then the board and the community agreed with the column in yellow for $49 million, and that shows you the percentage. Not a single building uh, would receive the full funding that was needed for the repairs uh, because of, again, the priorities. So what was the final vote? In March 2016, when the community voted, there's $108 million. Those are the three allocations. The bond uh, renovations or the um, repairs, 49 million. And then in order to convert to pre-K to eight uh, with the science pre-K as well as the science upgrades and district-wide IT was 50 million. So basically the board made a decision 50-50 for the most part repairs and then convert the school so that they are adequate enough to teach in the 21st century, not to rebuild it back to 1950 or 1960. Uh, so that was gonna cost you $50 million. Uh, the fields, uh, in order to keep talent, attract those who are so athletic within the district, uh, um, uh, funds were set aside or put in the bond for some 8.7 million for the fields for a total of 108 million. Fast forward one year, what happened? The repurposed bond, and I think I skipped one. One second. I'll go back. Okay, on the repurposed bond, this is the actual. In 2020, in 2017, the decision was made by the board as well as the community to add space for uh, Mandela. So that $22 million was previously zero. It went to 22 million. Where did the 22 million come from? It came from the other schools that had uh, infrastructure requirements. Uh, Pennington was also increased from eight classrooms to 12, and uh, Thornton campus, due to abatement requirements, was increased, as well as um, uh, Graham on the renovation. So basically, your six projects cost $90 million. So to put that in context, again, remember how much is one classroom, right? Nearly a million dollars for renovation, a thorough renovation. Well, you've got six buildings that had major upgrades for some $90 million. A second perspective is um, Yonkers uh, currently is uh, finalizing uh, their new school 35, uh, Community School 35, one, one building, four floors, 90,000 square feet, a quarter of Mount Vernon High School, $80 million. One school, $80 million. So that's the reality is that being able to renovate the schools versus trying to build new really did have a positive impact on the district. Because if you did not have Mandela to add capacity, uh, the additional uh, rooms at Pennington, as well as converting the uh, high schools of excellence, uh, you would not have nearly what you have as far as the academics uh, options for students in the community. Part two. Uh, part two, uh, this is where the infrastructure was postponed. So again, 2017, the decision was made in order to align those six priorities then these schools uh, basically had their infrastructure postponed. It was discussed uh, in one of the board meetings and or numerous board meetings that potentially it could be made up in multiple ways. One, uh, Senator Pretlow actually um, helped craft a bill 
specifically for Mount Vernon, in addition to Yonkers having the same thing, to double the MCA or the maximum cost allowance. So that is the only way that Yonkers is building that building because they got twice the maximum cost allowance and the same was put forth for um, for Mount Vernon. However, in 2017, 2018, it did not pass the Senate. So when they were voting on it, it did not go through. The governor didn't sign it. It never made it to his desk. So on subsequent years, I think through uh, Ken Silver and uh, others in the administration uh, made a petition to continue to ask for that as well. So it's not a dead issue as of yet, but at least you kind of know that there was the potential of having more if that would have passed the legislation. Some may ask the question, what about all the change orders? Why is it that uh, contractors receive so much extra than what the original bid was? Well, again, we're, we're educators, right? So from a construction standpoint, or any homeowner here would know, an industry standard for renovation is 10%, meaning whatever you estimate it to be, add another 10% to it. The reason being is, again, uh, items uh, can be um, uh, uh, not seen, like abatement and other items, especially like in Thornton. But look at the reality of what took place on this uh, $108 million project. Um, uh, number A, you see all of those had zero. You got money back on those four projects. Uh, the next six projects, there were no change orders. Going to C, uh, you had 13 projects that were, that were between 2% and 8% in change orders. So even though the buildings are as old as they are, it was still maintained and managed thoroughly to ensure that the contractors are not taking advantage uh, of the situation. And then you had four projects that were above the 8%, but it makes sense. Uh, the, uh, low, the low one, uh, 8.6, Mandela, uh, the fields uh, were high because of the adjustments. Uh, the Graham site, and then the only building that was above the average was Thornton, um, uh, was Thornton. And again, the majority of that was because of abatement that was discovered as they lifted the floors up, if they went into the walls, it was like, okay, no dance studio here while you have asbestos on the floor. So asbestos removal is very expensive. And now let's go to, um, I got it, yep. Uh, the next one we'll show you. Uh, this is just gonna be two clips that kind of summarizes exactly what was decided by the district and by the board uh, that kind of helps to put in context what actually took place as well as kind of what the future holds. Um, and we can go to the next one. The other thing uh, during these bond presentations also uh, that uh, I've been, well, the one, at least the ones I've been present at, and I just want to make everyone aware. And I believe I mentioned it here as well during one meeting. I can't remember all the things that I've mentioned during all the meetings anymore. I have so many of them. Uh, but we have a very aggressive plan for this, uh, for this bond. Uh, and the reality is to do all the things that we need to do in this district is going to cost well over a hundred million dollars. So the hundred million dollars is the deposit on all the stuff that we want to do in terms of restructuring the schools and uh, bringing the pre-K through eight, the facilities upgrades, the academic vision, but it certainly will not cover everything. Now we've listed everything that we'd like to cover, uh, but I will say it again that uh, my goal is to make sure that each project is a quality project that will outlive us and not try to fit all the projects under the 108 million, but meanwhile the projects are shoddy and they will not last 10 years. Uh, so whatever project that is left on the tail end that we need to continue, we will continue it through you know, budgetary processes or at some point maybe even a secondary bond. Uh, so I just want to let that out there, let it be known, let it be said, let it be memorialized and recorded uh, because I don't want people to come out and say, oh, well, you promised we'd get everything within this hundred billion. Uh, we don't know the prices of everything yet. Right now, as we have this vision, we're putting it together constantly. Every time a project gets drawn out by the architects that have hundreds of pages of documents, those documents go out to bid and then we get a... Uh, well, first they go to estimation, and then they go out to bid, and we have a closer idea of what that costs. And as those, and we, of course, we have priority projects, and the priority projects being what it's going to take to get that pre-K configuration, pre-K through 8 configuration, so that we can have our 
three high schools of excellence and structure those, and then we move forward. Uh, then the, the forward motion also uh, is going to require uh, science classrooms in all of the other elementary schools uh, and uh, room for pre-K and uh, seventh and eighth graders, uh, two uh, segments each. So that's the vision. Forward. I just want to remind everyone here, uh, including the committee, that this community has been uh, burdened with very high taxes as compared to their property values, uh, the highest in Westchester County. Uh, so, uh, you know, part of, you know, what most of us ran on was to ease that burden on the community, and I for sure intend to help keep that commitment. I understand your concern, uh, Trustee McDowell, regarding uh, every year that we don't uh, increase the taxes, we could, we have less, uh, that 2% equates to less of an amount that we could levy the next year off the total, uh, which is, okay, uh, again, uh, when we need the money, we'll ask the community for the money. Uh, but right now, uh, we have a series of projects that, you know, maybe it takes a little bit longer to implement. Uh, but that's okay, because we have to give families in this town a breather. And basically... And basically, that's $108 million uh, summarized by the board president at the time, also facilities uh, chair uh, for the facilities committee to help us to appreciate where we came, why certain things were selected, and to realize that there's a lot ahead. So just as $170 million was not cared for under the previous bond, again, your last um, uh, building condition survey demonstrated that you have significant repairs that are still needed as shown in this presentation. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. We have another presentation and that is going to be done by um, Mr. Pierce. Could you please come up here? Christopher Pierce, principal of Benjamin Turner. And this is about a program that we are having in um, Benjamin Turner, along with a partnership with Iona College. I know um, Trustee Corwin, you probably want to step forward and, and kind of talk about the, the, this program to everyone. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Could you hear me now? Okay. Good evening. Good evening again. Um, this Iona program, I am so elated that um, we were able to partner with Iona. Um, I have to tell you a, a little short story that um, when I'm, a, I'm, I'm affiliated with Iona um, University, my daughter has been in this program since she was in the seventh grade. And so last year when Iona University said that they have, they want to start a pilot program in the, in the district. They wanted to start a, the pilot program in the district, they reach out to Mount Vernon um, School District. However, it was unsuccessful. They met with a lot of bumps from Mount Vernon. Not sure why. So um, they came back and they were doing the presentation again. And um, I overheard them say that they are going to go into school districts again. And I raised my hand and I said, um, I met with um, the coordinators um, of Iona University for this STEP program. And I raised my hand and I said, um, would you consider going into Mount Vernon again? They shot me down because of the negativity that they faced when they came into Mount Vernon um, last year. And I begged them, I said, please give us one more try. I, I would facilitate everything in my power to get this up and running in Mount Vernon. And I presented it to the board. Thank you, everyone, for um, believing in this. And of course, I called the superintendent. And I, and I was so 
I was so happy. I was like, Dr. BC, you have to hear this program. And um, when I presented to Dr. BC, she told me to have them um, send over the proposal. And so they did. They sent over the proposal, and we were able to get this up and running. And I thank you so much. Thank you, the board for working with me, and I have to say thank you, Iona College, Iona University now, to um, partnering with um, the Mount Vernon School District. And Dr. Pierce, I have to say, they are so excited to be working with you. They say <laughs> your um, enthusiasm in this program is, is what they needed. And I, so I thank you so much for um, going forward and um, presenting this to the school and accepting this in your school. And when I spoke to Dr. BC, Dr. BC was able to identify the school that she thinks will be beneficial at this time for this program. But I have to also say, Dr. BC and the board, that I will be meeting with um, the, um, the coordinators again at Iona University in December, because I'm pushing for one more school to get this program um, for probably January or February, based on the success rate that Dr. Pierce will come out um, from his school. So thank you for spearheading the pilot here in Melbourne, and, and I know it will be successful, and when I go back to speak with them at the table, then we all have all success, and they will say yes again. And hopefully next year, they could spread their net a bit wider, and they could um, bring it in to more schools in the district um, due to funding. Um, and as I spoke to everyone about that, um, hopefully next year we could get more, fun they will get more funding because it's no cost to the district, it's absolutely no cost. Iona is footing all um, the costs 100%. So thank you so much, Dr. Pierce, and um, I wish you nothing but luck with this program. Thanks, thank you everyone. First, let me say good evening to everyone, board president, trustees, cabinet members. Uh, we're going to skip to slide number four. Thank you. I think your slides are going to be super good. Now, actually, so we're talking about technology. So, my favorite app is Google. I go on Google every single day because I'm a researcher by heart. I like to find things. And if I don't know things, I like to be informed. So, I go on Google and I search things. So, I type in STEM, STEP, and then not slide number four. Where's slide number four? Yes, there was an article that came, that was a research study. Was that number four? The one that you had before. There you go. So it says, STEM jobs see uneven progress in increasing generational ethnic diversity. Um, that's what's very disturbing. If you look at this um, graph, it was very disturbing. Because if you look where it says black, Hispanic, you will see that for all the STEM jobs, um, black is represented by 9%, Hispanic 8%, Asians 13, whites 67. And if you go across, you'll see health related science, math, physical science, computer, engineering, and notice black at the top, computer 7%, Hispanic 8%, Asians 20, other 3, white 62. Engineering 5, 9, 13. Those are disturbing stats in my eyes. And this is why this program is highly important. Now, I grew up in Mount Vernon. I came to Mount Vernon in 1987. That's like many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was 15 years old when I went to Mount Vernon in high school. Now, I didn't know what I wanted to be. I had an interest in the biology, but my mom's a nurse. But, you know, when you come from the island, sometimes you're attracted into certain programs. So I was in accounting, which I hated. So when I left Mount Vernon High School, I could do taxes and all of those things, but I hated it. So I decided, you know, my mom said, go to med school. I was like, no, I'm not going to med school. So I decided to become an engineer. So I went and I got a degree in electrical engineering. Um, and my, my what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is we need more exposure, which is what I needed, because when I went to college, I had to start off with pre-calc. Pre-calc is something I should have taken in the 12th grade. So because I wanted to do something totally different, no physics, no, none of those sciences, 
I had to start with the prerequisites, but I, the person I am, I work hard. It doesn't matter if I'm deficient, I'm still going to work hard to catch up, which I did. And I was able to graduate with honors in engineering. I don't know how it is. <laughs> That's like God's grace. You know, but um, it's possible. And what I want to see with this program is exposure for our young people. They need to be exposed to the sciences. You know, the data shows how much we're underrepresented. Minorities are underrepresented in these fields. And this is from 2021. That's why it's so disturbing. It's not like 10 years ago. This is like, it's here. You know, so we need to expose our kids. You said once, another school. This program should be in every school in Mount Vernon. Hopefully, eventually, it will be in every single school where we have the STEAM Academy. That's, you know, we're gonna feed into the STEAM Academy yeah. with the STEM program, just like how the arts gonna feed into Denzel Washington. That should be the focus, the grand focus for the district. Let's put this in every school so kids can be exposed. We need more, fe this went by Jake, also with um, gender. Females, we need more females. I'm a proponent for that, because when I did my engineering program, our parents are females, <laughs> mostly males. And we need more females, I'm biased, but I need more black females, minority females in engineering, and not just a traditional you know, role that we're supposed to play. I'm not for that. I have two daughters. I don't have that mindset. All right, so um, this program is very important. All right, I'm going to go to the next slide. Um, STEP. Does anybody know what STEP represents? All right, so STEP is, um, science, is a science, technology, engineering program. If you Google this and go to the website, New York State website, you'll see this will pop up and it will give you all the information, which I'm not going to do tonight because it's already there. You just have to be a researcher and find it. But um, this is a program that's across New York State. Next one, please. So when I looked at the data, this was during COVID, and if you notice, on the left side, you'll see some bars. Um, this program starts in the seventh grade. Um, there were 53 programs in New York State with about 10,000 plus students enrolled. And the program started in the seventh all the way to 12th. And if you notice, as the students went higher, notice the amount of the increase in the number of students enrolled um, in this program. Next slide, please. What I like about this next slide is it says 77% of the students enrolled plan to attend college, which is wonderful. So if we start to invest in our young people from the seventh grade, not when they get to STEAM, because I was also the dean of, of students at STEAM, so I've been around. Um, we want to start this from when they are seventh in the grade. seventh grade to spark their interest. Um, and on the other side, 57%, once they were enrolled, got into a STEM field. Go, um, this, Going into engineering, computer science, and all these things, it takes courage. But if you kind of give the students an appetite from when they're seventh, eighth, by the time they get to 12th grade, and one of the dilemmas, I'm going to tell you this for 12th graders, is what am I going to do with my life when they get to 12th grade? And so some people spend six years in a four year institution in college because they still cannot figure out what they want to do because they have not been exposed to what they want to do. So the earlier we start, I believe the better it will be. So I'm so happy for Iona University. Listen, Benjamin Turner is a community school, and part of the community school initiative is expanded learning. We're focusing on the expanded learning piece. Eventually, our school is gonna run from seven to seven. And we wanna expose our students to as many interests, robotics, uh, in, uh, engineering, I have artificial intelligence, which is what this program is going to um, reveal for us. It's going to focus on artificial intelligence. Can we go on to the next slide, please? All right, we're going to move past that one. Okay, next one. Okay, next one. Thank you. We're going to go through this very quickly. Next one. All right, so, other one. And then we'll. All right, so, I was on a presentation with this lady on the left side. I mean, I was fascinated because when I looked at the profile of these people, I mean, these people are all PhDs in computer science, and I was happy to be in their presence, and uh, from Berkeley, Northeastern, Harvard, and they're gonna be the instructor. This is an online program. They will be the one, they've decided. Now, if you look at their profile, 200 patents. I mean, 100 research publication over 50 years in computer industry, and these are the guys who are going to be the instructor. I mean, that got me excited. Like, I want to be a part of the program. Like, I'm going to have to stay after school with the kids and learn to be like AI I mean, myself. So I'm excited about it. These kind of things stimulate me. It's not just math, science, social studies. 
Now, they need more hands-on experiences so they can be fully engaged. And right now, our kids are very excited about this, and that's why we want to push this as much as we can with integrity. Next one, please. All right, so basically, it's a hands-on. I remember the lady said, in the first 30 minutes, they are going to build their own AI. I was like, what? In the first 30 minutes? Yes, they're going to build it in 30 minutes. In the first session. So I'm excited to see how that's going to work. And then eventually, they'll have a program, project, that they're going to all present, so on. In a nutshell, because I don't need to prolong this, this, I believe, is a very important program for our students. Remember, it's geared towards students who are underrepresented, minorities, and if you look at the job field, you realize that minorities are, you know, we're not up there. And so we need to come up, be, like have a growth mindset and think about how are we going to help boost and give our scholars, because they're all scholars, I don't care what disability they have, they're still scholars, all scholars in Mount Vernon. And we're going to give them the opportunity to succeed in a 21st century. Most of, most of us are analog learners. These are digital learners. So we need to make that conversion and give them the opportunity to be engaged in all of these things. We have to reimagine. That's one of the superintendent's um, points, reimagine. We need to reimagine education in Mount Vernon for the 21st century learners so that they can do things. There's no need for textbook. They have to all this stuff on an iPad. They can just have all these things and be modern. And we need to modernize, I believe, education in Mount Vernon, and it's possible. All it takes is vision. I want to thank Dr. BC for the vision that you have to um, reimagine what's happening. Uh, we're excited. I believe all the principals are excited. And as I said to close, I would love to see this program in all schools in Mount Vernon. And I'm so happy that we're the first one. <laughs> Whatever comes at Benjamin Turner's way, I am going to seize it because I'm going to make my scholars the best. And that's just who I am. I'm very competitive. So I'm going to in, you know, give my students the chance. But I want to spread the word because I believe sharing is here. So with that said, I want to thank you for your time and um, hope to give you good news about the implementation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pierce, for the presentation. And thank you also for reminding me that not I, I'm going to do the arts in all schools, but I'm going to do STEM in all schools. Because I know you were rubbing a thing real hard. <laughs> but that was a plan of mine for a very long time, that all schools should be able to do STEM, all schools should be able to do the arts. So, and, and that's how we're going to take it, take the show on the road. So thank you so much, and I want to thank um, Trustee Kerwin on working on that. She is um, filling my, what must I say, my dream of being a working board trustee, you know, that you don't bring problems to me all the time, but you bring programs to me for my children at, 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 my, at some point in time. So I'm, I'm, I thank you once again and that um, we're going to work together. But however, I also want to say, and I, I really believe that all the, the trustees here are going to ensure that our kids are successful. Because when we work together as a team, that's the only way we can achieve. And our kids need us. Yes. Okay? And we do not need to more or less, I mean... Go all over. Yeah, no, no. The more, I, just want, I just want to phrase it right. I want it to come out right. And we don't, we, we don't have to pretend that we are doing stuff and we are not doing things. Okay. So... I will welcome, I, as I welcome all board members to work with me, bring programs in and do things. But I also want us to stick to the truth. Because, and I also want us to hold on to faith. Because faith without works means nothing. So I want to say to each and every one of you, thank you. And I'm looking forward to some more programs. We are talking about bringing up STEAM. I spoke to the parents last night about how we can make STEAM school 
a STEAM school, and they are coming up with a lot of ideas. So anyone that can come to me with ideas, and we are ready to work for our kids, we need to move our, our kids forward. They are coming to school, the attendance has been outstanding, which means they are here. So we need to teach them. And that is what I'm looking forward to. Okay, thank you. And with that being said, before I close, I need to, to acknowledge Ms. Yolanda Kelly. Could you please stand, Ms. Yolanda Kelly? And also Mr. Um, Grant, please stand. They were voted on at the last board meeting. And Mr. Grant is now an assistant principal. Ms. Kelly is now a special ed supervisor. And they are of our internal candidates. We want to welcome them to the fold in another journey because I've been watching them for a long time. So I know their weak points and I know what they can do. And this is how I play the chess game because I put the right people where they belong. I put the right people on the right bus. So thank you so much. And if you want to say something, I know um, President Saunders will probably give you a chance to say something later. If you want to say something because you want to give them a chance now to say they something want, because they already voted on. They want to, yes, they already voted on. Do you want to say something, Miss Kelly? Come on. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you can come to the mic. You can come to the mic. What I really want to say is I think you had a great choice in selecting Mr. Grant as assistant principal for the ninth grade at the high school. Uh, Mr. Grant and I, and Ms. Jones worked in Second Chance, which was the after school um, suspension program. We worked together, and I've watched Mr. Grant. He, he's been steady, Freddie, all along. So I just want to say how happy I am for Mr. Grant for, his, for, for being selected as an assistant principal at Mount Vernon High School. Mr. Grant, you want to say something quickly? Yes, I do want to say thank you, Dr. Ben Conroy and the board for uh, selecting me for this position at the high school. And I've been here in Mount Vernon uh, for 20 years, uh, which I have not regretted. It's been a very um, rewarding 20 years. Um, I remember receiving an offer to work in Connecticut, and uh, I think it was God's will to bring me here at Mount Vernon. And so I worked with Renaissance, I worked with Second Chance, you know, Ms. Kelly, Dr. Jones, Dr. Smith, uh, we worked together, Dr. B.C., and um, I'm so pleased to be here in Mount Vernon. And I pledge to continue to work as hard as I can with the students here and families in Mount Vernon. So again, I want to thank you very much this we have another um, person in the audience, but he, she's not voted on yet, so I can't bring her up. So later on, we'll bring her up. Okay, thank you. And that concludes the superintendent's report. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we, do we have any committee reports? I'm just going to put that out there instead of asking anybody. Uh, tr Trustee Gale, any committee reports from you? Yes. Yeah, we, we did have a um, family and community engagement um, meeting with Dr. Conroy, Dr. Jones, and we're going to be looking into some mentoring and some other programs for the kids in the district, working with their families to see what we can do to help. So those are things that will be, you know, on the table for us to address that would definitely be helpful to the community. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other committee reports? Uh, we did have a, com a um, facilities committee uh, the other day, a meeting the other day. Uh, we more or less just went over some of the same issues that they're in the process of fixing now, like the elevator over at uh, Williams School. Uh, and the emergency lights that they're working on, as well as uh, it was also discussed the uh, cameras that they were working on. 
working on throughout the district to put into various schools to prevent the situation that happened last week. Um, that was more or less it. Yeah. Well, is um, any updates on the auctions for the equipment at the high school? I I don't have an update as far as the auction goes. I just uh, is there a date? I don't I don't know if there's a date. The uh, auction. There was a, a document that needed to be signed by you before anything could be done. And so I think that's been reprinted and, and uh, it's going to be given to you to sign. Just saying, the board had the resolution just saying that they could do it. There's no cost to us. They get 10% of whatever they sell it for, but it has to be signed by you before we can do anything else. So I think um, I, I had a question about the medals. Um, like there's some junk medals or medals in the in that room is and I think our medals is it is it copper and or whatever medals um, some medals are more. I'm oh, sorry. No, so uh, my question was um, some medals are, are more valuable than not junk. So maybe that's something that we can consider. So the, the machinery is what we're auctioning. The other stuff will be sold to a scrap metal uh, company uh -huh. when we get the machinery out of there. And yes, there's a lot of scrap metal in there. I don't believe there's any copper, but there's a lot of scrap metal that is valuable. Okay. There's also a lot of tools uh, which we will be keeping and, and using for, for the custodial staff, perhaps, or the maintenance staff, or for the various shops. There's a lot of that. Yeah, I think Trustee Lindsay had mentioned that there was another, um, was it the auto department, the auto? That's what, when I originally spoke to someone who was heavily involved with the vocational programs years ago, he had said that the that as there's with the auto shop, especially with now that they're working with Ford, uh, that some of the different some of the different machines in there, they still walk down, you know, walk through through the yard and go use to uh, fabricate or to uh, grind or sand things that are in the auto shop. So if that's stuff that they're using, but I think Mr. Silver had actually advised me at some point that they've gone through and asked what can be utilized within the district. And so those that we're interested in, we're able to, are going to be able to take what they want, and those will not be put up for auction. Okay. I just need to add to what um, Trustee Lenzi said about the cameras, that tomorrow all 115 cameras will be installed in Mount Vernon High School. Because that, the deadline was the 15th, but the 15th is gone. But tomorrow they should all be installed in Mount Vernon High School, and then they're going to move on to the five other schools. So I just want to give an update on that. Thank you. Any other committee report? No. Um, well, I had uh, Trustee Ninja, um, Trustee Kelly, and Trustee Adesobi met with me at the special education PTA meeting on November 10th. So I just want to say I, w I appreciate everyone coming out. We did make meet our goal of over 25 interested people, and we uh, appointed a temporary president, a temporary vice president, a treasurer, and a secretary, I believe. So uh, the next meeting is sometime in January, I believe, and I'll give you more updates as that comes along as far as committee reports. Did meet with um, um, Mr. Shingleford from Rockland Community College. He's the one that uh, helped us with the Ford. Um, he brought the Ford money in from Rockland Community. So they also had some programs that we can have some of our students articulate into, and that would be um, nursing, cybersecurity, and culinary. So uh, we met, we talked with Noel Campbell, and we walked through the um, departments and um, I think we're going to do that. They're going to match the curriculum and we can have some students do that. He also said they have um, a program for stage, um, some type of stage design or something and that could, that could be used for our students at um, Denzel. So I was excited to hear about that. Other than that, that's all I have for committee reports. Any old business? Old business? So I'll follow up on old business. <laughs> um, Mr. Ramirez, is there any updates on the uh, missing um, stuff that was in the um, school dude? Is that school dude where they we put the, oh, for the, facilities? the facilities? 
the recovery of files. I met with Mr. Silver, and we actually assigned the access to one of the consultants that is working in the facilities, and they are doing all the research. We have some updates for you. All the access was provided, so they they've been working on that, the information. Okay. All right, so you'll keep us updated on that? Mr. Silva, I have some updates. Mr. Silva, you have any updates on that? Um, so the other follow-up is uh, for the Pioneer League. We talked about that, special ed, right? Um, so I understand we're looking for staff for that. There was a, I think there was something in OLAS, and somebody asked me, um, asked me to, someone asked what, the Pioneer League was. So can someone explain that? There is a posting. Yeah, no, there was a posting, but the staff that read it didn't understand what the Pioneer League was. Okay, it's so. really the special Olympics. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's for our special ed students to have an opportunity to participate in sports. And mostly high school students, right? Yes. And that, that's the transportation. So what would we need a TA to do? Because that was the question. Would we need a TA? The system. Okay. That was the question. That was the, yeah, the students, you know, um, you know, especially if we get a, a lot of students that might need some support. Okay. Um, and the other thing was the Mount Vernon football team. Uh, are they still going to be playing at the high school or are we going to be playing at the Memorial Field? Is football season over? Yeah. No. I don't know. Is it? Basketball. Basketball starts? It's finished. It's finished? Okay. All right. Just wanted, I'm just following up. And as far as Mr. Um, Mitchell, as far as the audits were concerned, um, I don't know how what he's hearing, but we are doing audits for um, all the departments, special education, facilities, procurement. What else are we doing? Pretty much everything, right? Yeah. So I don't know who he found, who he's asked as far as administration as that we're not doing audits because we are. Did someone tell him we're not doing audits? Was it the I know, but he said that someone told him that. Mr. Silver. Mr. Silver, did you tell him that we weren't doing audits? We didn't need an RFP because we're using our, we're using the auditor we have already. The internal? Using the internal to auditors. Yes. Yeah. Speak to this? Yeah. Well, yeah, because he's got up and, and harassed the whole board for, for what he thought was something you so said. What Mr. Tobin is doing is a risk assessment of each department. He, he reviews the operations of the department, but he does not review the effectiveness or whether the children are getting their appropriate IEPs managed. He only reviews the operations of the department and makes recommendations and assigns a risk factor to each department between one and a hundred, such as payroll or accounting. He does not look into the inner workings of the department and how they, how, what they do with the kids, what services they provide. That is not the role of the risk assessment. That's what Mr. Tobin is doing. Okay. Well, I think then maybe Mr. Tobin misunderstood, we misunderstood Mr. Tobin because when we had a meeting with him, he said that he was going to do certain things. We can review it. Right? Am I right? We should, yeah, we should review it. We'll review it. I sent him an email earlier. We should review it. I have um, one question. Yes. Um, you have a question? Yes. Go ahead. Um, I have a, a concern. This could be under old business. Um, now that it's cold, um, the concern is for the, for the little kids, for kids that get dropped off in the mornings um, and they're outside in the cold. Um, what are we going to do to get them inside? Because, I mean, I dropped off my niece who is, what, nine years old and she had to stand out outside. Now the temperature has changed and these kids are outside. If you go to all the schools, these kids are outside in the cold. Meanwhile, the teachers, they come and they run inside in the, in the warm building. And the kids are left outside until 8, 20, 8, 30. What is it that we're going to do? Can we, can we have something in place so these kids could go inside, the students, the scholars, could go inside while it's cold? Because now the temperature changed. Why are we still having them outside until 8, 30 to go into the building? That matter has already been addressed the principal to allow the kids to come inside. What security is trying to do now is to get more security people on the inside 
that when the kids come inside, you have somebody to kind of supervise them. So that's being addressed as we speak. Okay, and from what time? What time would this, the school be open? Because parents do go to work early. What time would the school be open to drop off the kids? Well, early? different schools open different times. So yeah. if Lee can open at 7.30, then that's when it's going That's when it's going to be open for the kids to go. So can it be uniform across no. the district? No, they all have different times that they, that they open and close. But so, and so parents are going to be told when, they, when the school is open? When parents already know when, when their school is open for their kids. So they just know when to bring them there. I'm, I'm, okay, so what I'm saying is parents going to be told that the kids are now, they're going to make communication that the kids could go inside the building as opposed to stay outside. Because it's, it's been Correct. cold for the last couple of days and kids are outside. Yeah. And, and, Some of these kids and, are not dressed warm enough. And if the principal doesn't do it, which I know they will, we can send a letter from central office informing the okay. principal that that's going to take place. And plus I have my soldiers in the building, my parent liaisons, who can also ensure that this is taking place. And when will it start? When should, it's, it's supposed to have started already. It's so not if that's not start, it's, okay. So I will kind of enforce that. Okay, thank you so well, much. Most schools will take them in if there's supervision. Yeah. They have to be like the bus monitors, they get there. Um, I understand that, but it has not been for years. So that's why I'm oh, asking. I don't know, but uh, and some kids will stay outside if it's two degrees. It, it depends on the course of it. There's kids outside and they're cold, and we need to take them inside. Yeah, so, they need so to eliminate the, the cold in, in, for them getting sick, I mean, and so forth, and spreading germs uh, throughout the school. So we do need to take them in. It's, it's about time that we take them in. It's yes. cold now. So I will send a general email out to everybody. Thank you so much. For reminding yeah. them yeah. that this happened. And if they need, they need any resource mm -hmm. to make that happen, then. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So um, that was the committee report. Um, okay. Um, well, I just had some other some other. Um, I just want to recognize. I was. Um, I went to um, the um, church in back of home school for a jazz show a couple of Sundays ago. Excuse me. Is that the Presbyterian? The Presbyterian Church, yeah, to see a show and. Um, the um, the students there were some students that performed before the main event, and they were students from Denzel Washington School. I didn't know that they were going to perform. Uh, the students' names are uh, the name of the group is Full Black, but those are the same students. Or some of the students were in the soldiers' play at Denzel. So we had. Um, so I just wanted to recognize them and 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 give them. Um, Brian um, Buchanan, he played the piano. Damian Price was the drum. Malachi Walton was on alto, uh, alto sax. And we had um, Davion Price, who was the um, Mr. Davenport, Lieutenant Davenport, if you saw the play. Um, and uh, Lauren Satchel, she was the assistant director at the play, but she sang vocals, so that was a very good group. And I also wanted to recognize one of our scholars that graduated from Mount Vernon um, Denzel Washington School. Her name is Jaylene Seberg. She graduated and yes, yeah, she got a full scholarship to Howard University. So I just want to give her a shout out too. <laughs> Don't wanna... And she was supposed to be here tonight. Was she? Yes, <laughs> she was going to speak tonight about her scholarship, what it meant to her. Oh, yeah. she's, uh, she, got the, so um, she got the Bozeman, um, yes. Bozeman scholarship, yes. yes. So I just wanted to give her a yes. shout out. Okay, so we can proceed. <laughs> we got all that out of the way. Six point one. Can I have a motion? For approval of proposal to induct Judge William Edwards into the Hall of Fame. Motion. Second. Questions, concerns, discussions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. I have a motion for 7.1. Approval of Human Resources Resolution 71A certified. Motion. Second. Uh, 
<laughs> Questions, concerns, discussions? All those in question, concerns, discussions? All those in favor? Aye. Oppose? Abstain? Okay. Motion carries. Can I have a motion? For, give me one second. Can I have a motion for 7.2? Approval of human resources resolution non certified? Motion. I need a second. Second. Okay. Questions, concerns, discussions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. So, oh wait, we wanna, we wanna welcome. Okay, so now that the resolution has passed, we want to welcome Ms. Ramsey, our own special ed supervisor. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Dr. Ramsey, you wanna say something? Come on. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> someone else is going to be on the team with me tonight. And I just want to thank all of you so much for inviting me to join this community here. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to 2023. Thank you. Thank you. And I need to say that the district office um, positions for special ed has been fulfilled. Okay, can I have a motion for 8.1, authorization to revise mentors in their Mount Vernon City School District mentor program for new teachers? This is a second revision. Second. Just a motion. 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 Second. <laughs> Questions, concerns, discussions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. Can okay, have a motion for 8.2. Authorization to revise staff in the after school sundown program. Motion. Second. Questions, concerns, discussions? You said a motion to revise staff. Yes. So they added. Oh, this is the one you yeah. did not. Oh, yeah. oh, the name. Okay. Some social, right. studies, social science right. teacher. Um, yeah, right. Um, Mr. Allen, who's more assistant principal, um, has been deleted. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. have a motion for 8.3 authorization to update resolution to hire staff for academic power hour after school programs motion second okay, okay. questions concerns discussions all those in favor Aye. oppose <laughs> sorry <laughs> abstain okay. motion carries I have a motion for 10.1, approval of student services memorandum number nine, dated November 22nd, 2022. Motion. Oh, me. I need a second. 10.1. Second, she needs a second. I, I, I need a second. She needs a second. Second. Questions, concerns, discussions? Yeah. Oh. Last, last week I did poll 10.1, but um, I, my questions have been asked. Okay. Um, Thank all, you. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. We have a motion for 11.1. .1. Authorization to enter into an agreement with French Batots, Mount Vernon, to provide three-year-old children with access to pre-K kindergarten programs for the 2022-2023 school year. Motion. 
Second. Questions, concerns, discussions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Can I have a motion for 11.2? Motion. Uh, authorization to enter into an agreement with Westchester Community Opportunity Program Incorporated, WESCOP, to provide three-year-old children with access to pre-kindergarten programs for the 2022-2023 school year. Need motion? Motion. Second. Second. Okay. Questions, concerns, discussions? So, uh, so it said, where is this um, program going to be held? That, that was my question. Um, that one I said to me. Yeah, um, but it says it. elsewhere is where the corporate office is. So where, where's the program? So, um, okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. So, when contracting a CBL, some of them have multiple sites. So. Westcop is a conglomerate. They run over 30 different universal pre-K sites across Westchester County, including Mount Vernon, Osnings, Yonkers, etc. So when the contracts are drawn up, they are drawn to the main headquarters, sort of like their ed center. The full director of the program is the person that signs and executes the contract. This is different from a printer for tots where there's, there's a sole proprietor and one location. If you also notice, in case the question comes up for Our Lady of Victory, that is executed by the archdiocese. Mm -hmm. So if there is a CBO that is managed over multiple locations, the main office is the executor of the contract. Okay. So where is that going to be? Where is that program going to be housed in Mount Vernon? Do you know? So there are going to be two possible locations. We have some students that are currently in pre-K-4 that are in the West Health home. We're also going to offer pre-K-3 to those students that are in the shelter, as well as the site at the Bethel Church, which is across the street from Denzel Washington School. Those are brand new constructed classrooms that we actually constructed last academic year for pre-K-4, and we have a new space that has been constructed for pre-K-3. Thank you. It's, when you say it's across from Denzel Washington, which across? With Sacred Heart, the old Sacred Heart churches? Right up the street from that. Like up by, the street, okay. Mm -hmm, the Bethel Church. Church. Okay. I, is that Grace House across? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Next yeah. door to yeah. it. Okay. There yeah. All right. Okay. It is like three churches right there. On the, uh, three churches within the block. That's why I was asking what it was. Okay. I didn't think it was that one. I thought it was the other one. But thanks for clarifying that. We hope you visit our programs. I hope Dr. BC shared the pictures of the students who've come in for intake already. The parents are very thankful. So on behalf of the families, I'd like to thank the Board of Education. The students are officially once we get approved today, they will start school on Monday, November 28th. And we are very excited, and we will have more information on how the program is going. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Can I have a motion for 11.3, authorization to enter into an agreement with Our Lady for Victory to provide the three-year-old children with access to pre-K kindergarten programs for the 2022-2023 school year. Motion. motion. Second. Okay. Questions, concerns, discussions? I don't think it was for the same thing. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Same. Motion carries. To have a motion for 11.4, approval of general funds transfers 2022-23-2023, November 22nd, 2022. Let me get a motion. Motion. Mm -hmm. I need a second. Second. So, questions, concerns, discussions? Is this the same as what we voted on at the last meeting, the transfer of funds, or is this something new, Mr. Silver? 
this is uh, this is to can you all hear me from here? Yes, this is to provide uh, additional security services uh, to beef up our security that the superintendent's been trying to do for some time. And these were uh, three salary codes, one for the deputy superintendent, where we, we talked about that uh, at the last meeting. And another one is coming from the architect, which we no longer have an architect of our own. And the other is coming from an exempt area, which is cons consists of the treasurer, which we don't have yet, and the uh, assistant business administrator that's not paid through this. So these are extra funds. Uh, we're struggling to find places to, to get all the security money that we need, but this obviously is a priority, so that's what we're doing here. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Can I have a motion for 11.5? Motion. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, authorization to terminate bond. <laughs> so I, I, need a, I need a second. Who was that? Second. Oh, okay. Questions, concerns, discussions? Can I have some clarification? So Broadspire is the company that manages our liability claims. And uh, the consultants uh, have determined, and we have determined that Broadspire, keeping Broadspire for another year is not in our best interest. During the summer, we did pass something to extend them until we were able to make a decision. So now what we want to do, uh, this resolution allows us to send a 60-day notice to cancel Broadspire, which is required. So this is all written by our attorneys, including the, this resolution, and allowing us to uh, work with our company PMA who manages all of our workers comp claims and has for seven years to help us to move forward then we're going to in, in the next 60 days we're going to be recommending a new company uh, to replace Broadspire to manage all of our general liability claims so there's no cost involved in any of this we're just you're just authorizing us to cancel Broadspire or to give them 60 days notice which is required by their contract so that we can move forward to find a new claims manager. Is this the company we met here one night and spoke about the claims, isn't it? Yeah, the guy was in the corner, I think. Yeah, the guy that said over there. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Okay, motion carries. Can I have a motion for 11.6? Or records access, approval of records access officer. Motion. Uh, Second. Okay. Questions, concerns, discussions? All those in favor? Aye. Oppose? Abstain? Okay. Motion carries. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> can, can I have a motion for 11.7, civil approval of civil service stipend for the 2022-2023 fiscal year? So can we get an explanation on that? Sure. The, uh, oh, wait, can I have a motion? I, oh, motion. Did we motion? I'm sorry. Wait, yeah. And I need a second? Second. Okay. Questions, concerns, discussions? So this is a stipended position which had been... Uh, in Alice Patterson's realm during all the time she was here. So this is the, the um, apportioned uh, stipend of the $4,000. So a third of the year has passed, July, August, September, maybe more than a third of the year. So she will be uh, taking over the prorated amount from that $4,000 to manage the 2023 election that takes place in May. That involves the hiring of election inspectors, getting the voting machines here, doing all the work on election night and preparing, also preparing for the election and the results of the election. So we've had this for many years and this is just redoing of an existing stipend to a new person. Prorated because she didn't do it for the first part of the year. But why do we do stipends? Is this is what she's going to do. Why isn't it this just is, this is not her. This is not her. This is a, a, an extra that is not part of the job description of what uh, this person does. We have a motion out there? The motion out there. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Epstein. Epstein. Yes, mm ma'am. -hmm. Okay. Motion, motion carries. Um, BC, I had, mm -hmm. I have one question. Um, I got a call from a city council person about um, the board. They said the board is not has not approved. The board has not approved a um, for them to I guess hand out flyers for AIDS awareness at the Dole Center. I think on December first, she said the board didn't approve it, or he said the board didn't approve it, and I said we didn't see anything like that. Did we not approve it, or did you not want us to approve it, or what's the story? The Dole Center is not up. Yes, what happened is that. What happened is that a lot of flyers has been coming in through the school district and um, the principals have complained that they're not related to anything to do with the school district period. If we have a joint partnership with our logo on it, then we distribute those. And because I'm just following past practice. So, but if the logo is not on it for the for this district, then we just don't do that. So if you want to put our logo on it and we distribute them, then that's fine. But I'm just following past practice. No, I, I think what they, what they want to do is, is important. I think they want to bring AIDS awareness to our students mm -hmm. at the high school. I think they just want to, to, to distribute it at the high school. And I don't know if anybody, I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but do we have to put our logo on it? Is that what you're saying? Well, yes, because it's a partnership. When we put the logo on it, that means we are all. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know we had to do that. So if we want to change it, then we have to discuss it and change it. But that's what it has always been. Well, it's fine with me. I mean, it's, it's up to the rest of the board if that's, I mean. And where are they casting that at? The Dole Center? The Dole Center is where the um, function is going to be. But I right. what I heard was they wanted to hand out flyers at the high schools because, you know, aid, they want to bring aid awareness to our high school students. Yes, they, right. They, what happened is that they want our schools to hand out their flyers. You know, because most of the sometimes the the flyers came from City Hall with that or logo. That means we don't have any partnership with that. And what used to happen, we, if our partner, if our logo is on it, then we hand it out. If our logo is not on it, we can't be a vehicle to hand out everybody's flyer that come into the district. So we have to make up our mind: Do you want us to hand out all the flyers to the public to, 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 for everybody, or do we want us to just be the partnership? You you guys have to change that. I'm just following the past practice of if you're not in partnership with you, we don't do that. I would, I would actually, just my only question would be, depending upon the flyer, because you want to see the flyers first. Sure. Yeah, I think we probably I'm need to I'm just see saying the we should see, right. if we're, if we're going to hand out a flyer in school, we should make sure it's age appropriate. Oh, yeah, I you agree. Know, right. That's we simple. Need to see it, yeah. Right, and the superintendent always made, made that decision as whether the, the, the flyer is appropriate or not. But again, the big part of it, though, that I have been following is that if the district is not the district, if we are not in partnership with it, then we just don't do it. However, if we see it befitting and we want to do it, then that's a, that we have to have that conversations among all of us that if the superintendent see it befitting, then the superintendent send it out. But, but that flyer didn't come to, to the board, right? That flyer then wasn't no. circulated. But it doesn't need to go to you. You have to go to the superintendent. The superintendent is the one who would make the decision as to whether the flyer, yay or nay. But because I was following practice, I did not bring that to you because the flyer was not, has the logo on it. Normally when the, when the flyer has the logo, I send it to all, all the board members. Right, right, right. But if it doesn't have the logo on it, I don't send it to you because it's not all flyers. So that's what we from past practice. Oh. But if you want to change your practice, that's on, is up to you. Oh, okay. I don't know about changing the practice, but that particular situation, I think that, and I, I think that we probably need to look at it and make a decision from that, right? Okay. Because I think that's important for our students to know, you know, not about anybody's fish fry yes. or anything, but something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. But, but I, but I did. Fish fry, that's a different story. Right? No, but that's, okay. The but, but then again, we, we have, to, I, yes, and I understand that, but we have to stick to, to our, um, what we say we are going to do. We can't just flip, keep flip-flopping. No. I'm not a flip-flopper. If the, 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 the school logger 
logo is on it, then that's what we do. If the school okay. logo is not on it, is that not what we do? We are not a vehicle to be everybody who print who print uh, 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 right, right. So we have to stick to what we do. We, you see, that's what happened with us. We don't we don't have systems in place. So if we are going to start doing things, we got to put systems in place. Okay. That's what need to say. No, no, we're not doing it. We're not involved in it. But I guess they wanted to get the high school kids aware of that. So we're going to go into executive session. Yes. Yeah, we are. We have Gus here. He didn't come. This no, he's not Excuse me? He has Yeah, he's going to, I guess he wants to talk to the board about a couple of things. Oh, right. So we're probably not going to come out, but I want to thank everybody um, for coming out today and have a happy holiday and be safe. Eat well. Don't eat anything that makes you sick. <laughs> All right. So you guys, um, so, um, she has the motion. <laughs> Can I have a motion to enter executive session for the purpose of discussing history of a particular person or corporation? Motion. Second. Okay. Questions, concerns, discussions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. So now have a happy holiday. Yeah. Happy holiday.